if you're watching this recording or live stream, this will be the final lesson with Kenneth about learning Japanese using idols. <laughs> using idols sounds kind of weird, <laughs> but <laughs> through idols and learning about it to watch more idols. And as always, I have Kenneth here. Hello, Hello Kenneth. everyone. Kenneth, you want to recap on who you are for people who are watching? Uh, so I'm I'm a dude living in New York. Uh, I'm 23 years old. I like long walks on the beach. Mm. Uh, I also no, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> who likes walking uh, on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> There's no beach where I live. So uh, I'm my name is uh, Kenneth Oi. Uh, I am a person who learned Japanese, self-taught Japanese. I translated Sashi Harino's book for New School Kaidan, and I'm also part of New School Kaidan. I'm also a software developer, so please hire me. <laughs> and I think that's that covers it. All right, all right. Okay. And I'm, I'm and I'm <laughs> Filipino Chinese. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. And so, as I mentioned before, this is the final lesson. So, for those of you who haven't watched the other ones, you can go watch the other ones. Or you can watch this one piece. We're kind of going to recap all of what we talked about before. Is that right? Yeah. So, the plan is uh, we're going to recap uh, the uh, the method that we've been going for, going with for the past uh, couple of weeks or so. And this is going to be the last one because uh, we want, uh, or I guess I wanted to finish it off with the, at the last episode. Because at, at that point, there's really nothing more to uh, expand upon. But for those of you watching, you might be kind of curious as to how, uh, how I approach grammar instead of words. Because most of the method I've been showing uh, for the past three episodes is really uh, wholly based on words. So I think that it's not... It's, it's not... It's not strange to for you to think that uh, you don't really know how to like approach grammar instead of instead of just doing words because mm -hmm. then because then that wouldn't be able to uh, complete that wouldn't be the complete picture. So this is why I decided to go with this one, and then hopefully that should be <laughs> the end of uh, this series, mm -hmm. this learning Japanese series. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do for this episode. Is uh, we're I'm going to once again go over the methodology that we've been going through uh, for finding words within a variety show. Uh, we're going to expand upon the same the same thing from last episode using the same nogi the nogizaka uh, show. And once we've gone over that, I will try to expand on how to learn grammar as you're trying to teach yourself Japanese. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, as a warning, I haven't really thought of, thought it out, and I'll explain why. But uh, short story, it's the way that it kind of happens, and I guess this is really more of what happens when you self-teach yourself something, is that it's very haphazard, and you just kind of, uh, you kind of just brute force it until the pieces just kind of fall together. Hmm. So, uh, with that said, we're going to go over the Nogizaka episode. Okay. And for everyone that's down in the description below, if you want to check that out and follow along with us. So, like I said, I'm just going to go through this really quickly. If you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't watched the previous videos, I, I suggest you do so. If uh, you haven't already. Mm -hmm. But uh, after, after, just by watching this, you should be able to get it get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to pick a uh, kanji heavy one. So this one kind of kanji heavy, so I'll just do this really quickly. Okay, I'm going to talk really quickly, really just talk, talk, talk through my process really fast. So I'm going to select my Japanese uh, IME tool. I'm going to go to tools and then go to handwriting pad. I'm going to write this kanji. Uh, <laughs> It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna have to. Oh yeah, that one was a fun one to to figure out when I when I first did it. Gonna yeah. 
And you guys will see these difficult ones <laughs> as you guys uh, start practicing uh, this. <laughs> so, so what you what you'll notice is that uh, in the last in the last episode, we in doing this method where you're just writing the kanji through this writing tool, you're gonna run into mistakes. Uh, pretty running into mistakes is not going to be uncommon. Mm. It's gonna be possible. And like right now, I'm I'm actually I'm at. Oh wait, maybe I need to. Yeah, like I can't. It's not. It's not showing up for me right now. Oh, I I, I saw it, but you deleted it. <laughs> uh, my bad. <laughs> it was like in the first row. Yeah, so th this will take a couple tries, doing it in different orders. But I think another benefit of doing it like this is. You learn a little bit about what's right and what's wrong in stroke, stroke order, is that right? Uh, yes. So, okay, so we've, we finally got it. So this is why I, you gotta, as I've been uh, trying to stress for the past three episodes, that you really need to know your stroke order. Uh, I'm just going to uh, give you what this is. It's not toshi, but by itself, it by itself, it's uh, valid as a word. But in this case, it's uh, it's a suffix for this number, so it's Niju Sansai, or 23 mm -hmm. years old. So we can just... We can just highlight this in Rikaichen. So once we've got... So, so once we've uh, gotten it, once we've written it out, we can use uh, Rikaikun for Chrome, if you're on Chrome, to find out the meaning of the word, or put it through this dictionary. Mm -hmm. Or if you're on Firefox, you can use uh, Rikai-chan to take out the meaning of the word. Now we're going to do this one. So uh, one thing that I mentioned from uh, last week is that once we've uh, sort of been exposed to kanji once, we can uh, reuse it again without trying to write it. Mm -hmm. So if I try to... Let me bring this up again. So this one is like, I think is like that. If you're wondering what's happening with uh, my thing, uh, as a as a Linux user, it sends the kanji to my clipboard first, so I have to. So it's basically a, it's the same thing as copying it, and then I got to do like this paste thing that goes on. Uh, in your case, if you're using Windows, if you just click on it, it should appear in the input wherever you've put your uh, cursor on. Mm -hmm. I think it should be the same for Mac as well. All right. Um, this one's a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, I think I got it. It's like something like that. Yeah, and a little second part of the kanji. <laughs> oh, you see it already? Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. So that's that. And notice that this half means nenre. So that's a word. Mm -hmm. You'll find that uh, you'll find that the pattern is that words are consist of uh, consist of two kanji and anytime it's like for for a kanji like this, it's kind of like two words combined together to uh, form a different word, like a composite word, I guess. Mm. I just I just made it up that term. <laughs> okay, so the good thing about uh, what this what this particular uh, set of kanji represent is that uh, notice how this kanji is the same as this kanji. So we don't have to write it again. Mm -hmm. All we need to do is just uh, highlight this and then just copy and paste. Now, all we have to do is just write this last one, which is also, um, so all right. Second row, second row, second. last. Okay. Phew. <laughs> Not like last week, where we couldn't even get the person kanji in. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay, so notice the thing about this one is, um, so... Once we put it through the dictionary, nothing nothing comes up. Okay, mm -hmm. so 
for now, we'll just copy and paste <coughs> it. Mm. And what we can do is just run it through Rikai Kun or Rikai Chan or whatever, Rikai, whatever Rikai thing you're using. So this is, so this picks it up as Nenre and Toshiwe. Mm -hmm. Now notice that uh, Rikai Kun is picking it up as two separate words. Mm -hmm. Now if it was a word that used for kanji, this should just highlight the rest of the rest of the kanji altogether, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So what that tells you is that either so two things, either that these two words together is a, is just as it is, two words, just two words used together, mm -hmm. or yeah, it's just two words used together, mm -hmm. not particularly as a for kanji word, mm -hmm. or um, yeah, because it could be either all one word or separate. Or yeah, right. there's separate okay. or there's separate words. Mm -hmm. Also, this should actually give you a, a window into how Japanese works. So, what I mean by that is, uh, if you okay, so bear with me if you're not familiar with Japanese uh, in general, or you just don't know Japanese. So it's pretty common to omit certain grammar points. So, for example. What they're saying here is the nenre nenre da yone. So I'm just nenre toshidoe da yone. So what this really, what they're really trying to say, if it was uh, proper, and I'm not saying that proper meaning that if without the omission of the other grammar points, it would be like this. It would be nenre ga toshidoe da yone. But in speech, it's pretty common to just uh, shorten or omit certain grammar points and then what would because it's generally it's generally agreed that this is what this person is trying to say you can or you probably can guess what they're going to say already mm -hmm. so this is not necessary and then it's pretty common just to be like nene toshiwe da ne instead of nene ga toshiwe da ne mm -hmm. you just omit that because it's like already implied right yeah so uh, one one thing that you'll learn about Japanese language is uh, you want to be able to shorten the amount of things you say. Yeah, so it's so it's shorter because uh, the Japanese language, when you're saying things, can get pretty long. Mm -hmm. And in the you want to be you have to take it as if you want to be like a lazy person. You just kind of like omit stuff until it's like not that. It doesn't take too much effort to say. Hmm. I mean, even even with English, we have that, right? <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah. you have that a lot in English. Uh, a, an example doesn't come up to mind, but I'm quite sure that there are quite a few of that the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, so this is sort of like the similar construct. So instead of saying "I have," you say "I've." Mm -hmm. Something it's. It's not quite the same because it's not like the entire, not like uh, Japanese grammar in the sense that the entire, like, so again, it's not like ga just, not like ga where the entire thing disappeared, but in this, in this case of English, it's morphed into like a sort of different set of like sounds and mm -hmm. words rather than just disappearing altogether. Mm -hmm. Or I think, I think one could be like saying, you know. But people say, you know, maybe. Mm. Sort of, sort, <laughs> sort of. of. <laughs> they just, yeah, they just yeah. omit things differently. <laughs> they remove words differently. <laughs> but yeah. every, every every language is that. Yeah. If, uh, yeah, n one example doesn't really come up to mind immediately. Mm. But, there, but there are some. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Actually, yeah, yeah. <laughs> English is flexible to probably accommodate that mm. sort of uh, grammar construct. Mm. Okay, so we'll do this one. Get my handwriting tool. So it's just that. Doesn't really matter that it's mm. let's see. Oh to no. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Same thing as last time. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste that. Mm. Alright, I can just bring it up on my 
I guess not. So I'm gonna do this as well. Hello there, person in chat. Thank you for saying hello. Hello, person in chat. Thank you for saying. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know. I don't want to like mess up your name. So. <laughs> I'm saying hello. <laughs> so hello. I like this. I like this kanji. I think it's fun to write. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean like this part. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. How you like that? First option, what? <laughs> we haven't had that in a while. <laughs> yeah, look how look how nice I wrote that. I know, right? <laughs> you can sell that <laughs> at a museum or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. All right, so this is uh this is Otona. You'll hear that word a lot. Mm -hmm. Otona is adult, and this tolls in, which means that. Oh, notice, see, notice again, uh, taking, taking, uh, this word, this kanji that we already, uh, we, we took from this word, mm -hmm. it's the same for this one, so we just need to copy and paste and we don't, it's backspace of that one, so all we need to do is this one, mm -hmm. so. Just using your resources from other ones. I'm just gonna... Copying that, and that means uh, honto. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure everyone knows that word, even if even not looking it up. Mm -hmm. Just hearing it after watching hearing so much, it. so much yeah. of these shows. Yeah, or just any anything, I guess. So yeah, honto, honto, easy. And uh, I'll this one's kind of kanji heavy as well, so I'll, I'll leave this part at, at that. I got 30 minutes left. Okay. So, this is going to be the last one. This is, this, is a, this is a little bit of a side, but in the first episode of uh, Nogi Ego, they made, they made a joke that this guy is Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, everybody or calls I, me Jackie Chan. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said, he's like, yeah, I'm actually Jackie Chan yeah. or something like that. Uh, but he does. He looks like Jackie Chan, so... Oh wait, I don't. I don't need to. I don't need so again. Uh, so this kanji right here, I don't need to uh, write again because we took it already from this word, otona. Mm -hmm. Where do you, where do I get it? So that and notice that uh, this word right here, this kanji right here, is also used here as well. Mm -hmm. So you can just sort of I don't know, like save separate that. that. <laughs> yeah, save it for later. Uh, I'm gonna write this. One, I think you're good with writing like half of it. <laughs> because I, I think I think the general idea is there. Again, this is review for everyone. If yeah. you guys, if you guys don't know what's going on or are a little confused, we cover this over in the first and second episode, so you can watch that after this live stream is done, in order to catch up. And then when I finally upload this one, then you'll be able to watch the full series. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot, and I'm almost at 30 minutes, and I gotta leave in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, this is a uh, ote. So, ote, so you're gonna look at, so another thing to keep out for is uh, which definition is the correct one, because a lot of words have different, have uh, like tons of meanings. Mm -hmm. uh, ote in this case, like, notice how it says like front castle gate, both arms open, uh, open or sh outstretched arms and major companies. Uh, once you've uh, taken out this entire uh, word, you're gonna know that it's like Ote Yobiko. This is Toshin High School no Ninki Ego Ego Koshi. So you're gonna re so once you've like taken all the word definitions from like this f this entire like phrase, if you just compare all the definitions based on the context, you're going to kind of just be able to figure out that. Uh, out of these definitions presented, it means major company. So, it's a major, it's a major prep school. Mm -hmm. All right. So, that that concludes this part of the uh, of the stream. Mm -hmm. Again, if you're not familiar with what's going on, please watch the past three episodes. So now we went over that. Next was grammar, right? 
Yeah, so again, so the point of this part is uh, Josh wanted to go over how one would sort of learn grammar. Because again, we've, we've really just gone uh, through words primarily. And I actually kind of, uh, so like I said in the beginning, I kind of don't have a plan on how I'm going to share it. Uh, I'm going to try to wing it, so I'm, I'm kind of sorry. And the reason why I'm not really sure is because once, if I to if I'm to draw upon my own experience, it's very haphazard. There's really no, there's real there there is a process. I mean, I think there is a process, but um, all right. So I mean, I have this diagram here, so I guess I'll just dive into that first mm -hmm. and see where I can see where I go from there. So what's gonna happen is that uh, if if you bought the book, so I someone left a comment on the last on the last show mm -hmm. saying that they bought the book so thank you for thank you for your vote of confidence in me and buying the book we're not sponsored so once, <laughs> we're not sponsored by Kodansha though we wish we were cuz i like i like that book so what you what are you going to do is uh you're going to look at the book you're going to read it you're going to look at uh, either that book, the Japanese Sentence Patterns for Effective Communication, or the a Dictionary of Series, which is which goes from beginner to advanced. And as you're reading, as you're reading it, you don't have really quite context of how it can be used in Japanese. And while there are examples which sort of clarify uh, the usage, you might not be able to sort of quite understand how that fits into like real Japanese, right? Like. Japanese taught Japanese said by Japanese people in like a Japanese context, whether mm -hmm. that be like variety shows, anime, radio, in real life, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have this diagram. You can see that, right? That that's pretty yeah. clear for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is you. This is gonna be most of you right now. Let me move my mic. So this is most of you right now. You're all at book and there's two things that are going to happen once you've read this book is you're going to read book read book and kind of uh, sort of just read the grammar and how it's how it's being used uh, get in some example some example sentences though it's there the effectiveness of those example sentences might vary you're going to take that and what's going to happen is that once you go through whatever medium it is I'm just going to assume it's TV it's some mm -hmm. sort of like TV show so two things are going to happen. What's going to happen is that either you, a grammar point that you've read about is going to appear in a TV show. Mm -hmm. And its use in a real Japanese context is going to become more clear to you. Or it's not going to appear. And then it's just sort of just stored in your like head. Mm -hmm. But the, the important part, uh, actually I'll, I'll touch back on that. So, and then what happens is that you sort of just, or yeah, so what happens is that either you recognize it and you kind of just clicks, or you see it and it doesn't quite make sense yet. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is, once you watch the TV, you're going to go back to the book, maybe go back to like the same grammar point you've come across, and then read it again to see if you can sort of like work out its meaning in the context. And then what's going to happen again is that you're going to read the book and then see if you encounter it the wild and if you, whether or not it makes sense to you at that point in time. Now what's also going to happen is that instead of book going to TV, it can start off as TV to book. Mm -hmm. Meaning that once you watch the TV, what's going to happen is that either, oh, well, what, what is going to happen is that you're going to be exposed to Jap a lot of Japanese you don't know, which is okay once you're starting out. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually I would say that um, you should just keep doing whatever it is you're doing with them like immersing yourself in radio shows or TV shows just making sure you're always you're constantly exposed to Japanese because that creates a lot of opportunity for you to uh, really lock in a lot of the stuff that you learn outside of watching the media mm -hmm. so again what's gonna happen is you don't know what's going on and then you read the book and then you, once you've maybe encountered that in the book, you watch the TV again to see if it comes out. And what this happens is like, it just creates a sort of like a feedback, feedback look, a feedback loop. Mm -hmm. 
where it's going to be a lot of what you don't know and then researching it or either you read about it, you just happen to read about it and then you encounter it which reinforces your understanding about it mm -hmm. or maybe it makes you more curious as to what it is that it or what it how it's like really used in the wild mm -hmm. so to speak and then the reason why I'm kind of like why I wanted to stop it at the third episode because it's really just this feedback loop mm -hmm. where you just take books you just sort of read it you see if it's applicable in the wild you see how how when if it's when and how it's applied in the wild mm -hmm. or if it is, if it is at all and then you sort of just take whatever that is and then feed it back into what you've known and seen and then just you hit the books again mm -hmm. and then you just sort of just keep doing this over and over again until you know all of a sudden you can like translate like books or something <laughs> <laughs> you read the next kind of translate the next book <laughs> yeah like I like I don't know like uh, Uchiyama Natsuki's like she like her book about the, uh, the Japanese constitution I don't know <laughs> Like let's say let's say you have your your nice little book over here of Japanese patterns for effective communication. All and right. Let me go to a random page. Uh, okay. I'll go. I'll go to a random page as well. Actually, what page is it? Uh, it's six chapter one thirty eight. That's the page. That's one thirty eight. Okay. Those who have the book could follow along. If not, you could just listen to us talk about it. All right. So. Uh, this one stating like purpose and cause and reason. Yes. Which one you so seventy seven? Yeah. Okay. Uh like what about it? Like so you would read this? Yeah. You'd read this example, read all of it, and then when you encounter it in the wild, you reference back to it, right? Uh I guess when you read when you read stuff from books, mm -hmm. uh I, I keep it in first what I want to do is just read about it and and I just keep it in mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, I'll read it and then I'll just do my sort of thing and be like, mm -hmm, I, I read this, I think I read this. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, once it comes in the wild, either either it just sort of clicks, like you just remember, you automatically remember, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, this is what it meant, because it might have been easy, or um, it doesn't make sense, And but you've, but you've seen it before and you just come back, you come back to this to clarify it. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you think, oh, I, I think I read that before, right? And then you, like, look it up, see if you remember it. Uh, yeah, so this is actually quite common mm -hmm. uh, regard in sort of, like, self-learning in general, regardless of the topic. Mm -hmm. Because it's, mo it's very important to expose yourself to as many resources as possible. So, like, for example, um, I read this, uh, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's an article or a blog post or whatever, about uh, this... This medical student, like I don't know, the medical student or something, who who came up with, I guess, a cure, or some sort of like breakthrough, for this, for whatever, for whatever it is, and it's because she always reads these, like, she reads these medical papers all the time, just out of nowhere, for, for the sake of, I guess, uh, storing knowledge, mm -hmm. and what's gonna happen is that. Once she's just re read all these like different um, medical papers, uh, she'll start to make the connections and be able to sort of put something together, come up with some sort of solution that's never been come up before. Mm -hmm. uh, same things for Japanese. Like when you read the grammar book, you know it's not going to make sense. It's never. I mean, I can I can like sort of empathize with that. Like it's not going to make sense at all. But it's going to be. Like the experience of like reading it and going through it, it's gonna like store in your mind, and then once you kind of like see it actually for like the first time, it's kind of again either just click right away because because uh, the the material was kind of like easy to begin easy to understand, or you don't quite understand it and you just sort of just just research it again until. Until it makes sense. Yeah, that could be feel for you, like especially since you're watching the shows that you want to watch, and then you see that point, and you're like, "Oh, I really want to understand what they're talking about." Then you go back, look it up, and do more research. Yeah, exactly. 
And do you want to explain a little about the dictionary of basic Japanese grammar and how you look up stuff? Uh, not really. I mean, it's it's quite the same process as well. Mm-hmm. I'll just uh the same. I would say even the same is, is the same for this book as well, mm-hmm. or any grammar book. Uh, I would just I'll just flip through the pages and see which see something that will just interest me. Mm-hmm. Like. Uh, it's that mindset, I guess. You just look through the book and just think, oh, you know, this seems kind of like interest. This seems really interesting to learn. Uh, I wonder how you say in Japanese. Mm-hmm. Or you're gonna go through the thicker book, the way thicker a dictionary of book. And I mean, this is like a, a it's a really thick book. It's more than six hundred pages, I think. Mm-hmm. And what I do is just sort of, I don't know, just roulette it. I might even just roulette it and just be like, oh, I'm like, oh, I guess uh, I'm going to read uh, that this one. Mm-hmm. Just like flip through it and then just, and then just read through it. Uh, there's one thing I do want to mention with grammar because mm-hmm. you're gonna you're gonna uh, come up with you're gonna come across this a lot, and that's grammar points that have the same meaning. Like if you're if you're if you're an English speaker, mm-hmm. and you're learning Japanese, you're gonna find that uh, there's many kinds of the same way to say something in English, but it's it's different. It's no more nuanced in Japanese. Mm. So a pretty common example is when you're trying to uh, do some sort of comparison of uh, of something else. For example, it's the word like. It's really the word like is used to Say something that has a likeness to something else. Mm-hmm. So, for example, uh, this ice cream tastes like lemons. Tastes like, or this idol is very Matsumura Kaori like, mm-hmm. or something like that. So, like in this case, uses sort of like a pseudo suffix, I guess. You just kind of attached it to a noun, and now I'm saying that this idol is. Uh, has characteristics that is uh, prominent, I guess, in Matsumura Kaori. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, but in Japanese, instead of saying like, you can say uh, uh, yo, like, yeah, just like some, like, like, nani nani yo, or nani nani mitai, or nani nani poi. Mm-hmm. And those all mean, like, those are all three grammar points that. Uh, describe the likeness of something, but more in a more nuanced sort of way. Mm-hmm. And what you want to do is either buy buy this book, <laughs> buy this series, because it, it does a really good job of uh, explaining the differences between grammar points that are especially similar. Mm-hmm. Or you can just sort of, I guess, look it up on Google mm-hmm. and then just ask Google Sensei. So, in the first in the first uh, j- episode, I talked about this website called uh, Japanese Stack Exchange. So yeah, you can also just use like this Stack Exchange, which is really like a more like a more nicer Q and A sort of thing that's specific to Japanese, which is just look it up. Like I wish I had this. I mean, this is because it's like a more of a uh, more it's a more modern Q and A site, mm-hmm. kind of like Quora if you if you know Quora. So yeah, I guess I just I just wanted to warn you about. When you once you are reading words, it's actually I think kind of more healthier to uh, question yourself these kind of things. Like oh, uh, poi poi means kind of means like mitai, but they both mean like, right? But I don't quite understand what the difference is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's really good because now you're you want to like confirm what you know, and once you've really kind of like distinguished the different nuances between both of them, you can sort of like. You have a deeper understanding of it overall. <laughs> I guess uh, so. Once you've sort of uh, created this sort of base understanding of Japanese, uh, what I do, especially what I still do now, is if there's a grammar point I don't really quite understand, I look it up in Japanese. Because mm-hmm. you got into that level where you could just look it up, right? Yeah, I've I've bootstrapped myself enough. So that I can just, you know, pretend like I'm Japanese and just, well, not really like pretend, but really just search, do the search in Japanese. And you'll be kind of surprised that 
this is i mean this is pretty common like maybe japanese people are like i don't know maybe they're learning english mm -hmm. or and they want to know like now they're doing like the reverse like oh i want to say like poi uh how do i say that in like english mm -hmm. and you're gonna be like you know I don't know the person answering the questions. You'd be like, "Yo, did you know like poi, poi, mitai, and yo mean like, like yo as means like like and to describe likeness." Mm -hmm. And be like, "Oh, that's cool. Like, I'm thank I'm thank you for your answer. Mm -hmm. I don't know something like that." Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, for me right now, when I look up, when there's like words I don't quite understand, or when there's uh, grammar points I don't quite understand, I just look it up in Japanese. Mm -hmm. If someone were to make a roadmap starting from step one mm -hmm. what, and onwards, what do you think that roadmap would look like? Uh, okay, so roadmap, first learn your kana first before you do anything. Mm -hmm. Because if you, you cannot learn Japanese without learning kana first. And I just want to say that, mm, it's, it, I mean, the, the number, the kana that you need to learn is quite intimidating, but just know that you know it's it's not it's not that hard i think i think actually because it's this, it's rote memorization mm -hmm. all you really need to know is um how how what the sound is and what the which sounds correlate with which character mm -hmm. as opposed to like i think i looked at korean i mean hangul hangul is very hangul is very, like really logical and the system, the way writing system, but like I, I looked at how one might like write read Hangul, mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense to me right off the bat <laughs> uh -huh. because there's a lot of like I didn't realize how much logic there is just from how it's how it's written, like how much logic is just packed into like one character, mm. as opposed to like Kana. That's this like mind. It's pretty mindless. Mm -hmm. it's just you don't this, have to really this, this, uh... yeah. Like, oh, like this. This symbol means ka, or this symbol means like he. Mm -hmm. It's again my. So you don't have really have to think about think about it too much. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to learn your kana first. You got to have it down, and you don't want to drag it on for too long because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I you could you could drag it on for like two months, but why would you? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if you if if you want to do it for two months, then that that. If that works out for you, then fine. Mm -hmm. I would not. That would definitely not work out for me. So what I did is I learned it within a week, and it's definitely possible. And I, that includes hiragana and katakana as mm -hmm. well. Actually, it's to be more accurate, it's actually all of hiragana and like ha, ha, like three-fourths of katakana. But I was still a little bit like mm -hmm. fuzzy on katakana, but I was able to like... It was good enough for that if whatever I did not know, I can just sort of like pick it up as I go. Mm -hmm. So once I do that, <clears throat> that should be good enough to at least recognize the kana that appear in ch Japanese shows or in Japanese media or whatever it is you're looking or watching. Mm -hmm. Then what you want to do is uh, pick out certain kanji. In the last episode, I said there is this there is this link to like the top 100 use kanji on the internet or something uh, I think that's a good start what I want you to do is learn the stroke order and nothing else do not try to like attempt to put do not try to attempt to map uh, any sort of like readings or meanings to it just purely just learn the stroke order mm -hmm. uh, while you're doing that I would like for you to uh, take a dive into the Japanese sentence patterns for effective communication. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do those two kind of simultaneously. Then once you've sort of gotten down a, you've gotten sort of the rhythm of the stroke order and how, of like most kanji, what you want to do then is watch variety shows, and again whatever that whatever you're watching. Mm -hmm. So AK Bingo, just take watch AK Bingo, and then transcribe those words that appear on the screen through your handwriting tool, mm -hmm. which is available again via your whatever software it is you're using, and then you put it through uh, Rick Haikun by putting the words onto your like browser, mm -hmm. or you put it through like a dictionary, and then you sort of just 
again, there's there are like simultaneous feedback loops that are going on. Mm-hmm. You just sort of keep doing that over and over again, and then yeah. So I, I imagine when you keep on doing that, it like stacks up, stacks up, and like your knowledge like grows with it, right? Yeah. So it just it it only kind of like goes uphill from there. Mm. Hey, uh, Josh, I, I have a question for you. So, have you felt like there's any like as I've been describing this process? Have you felt that uh, you've been able to make some some significant progress? Yeah, I, I feel like with the vocab because it keeps my interest there. So like before, it used to be like I use an app or something to like learn vocab or something. But then with uh-huh. like variety shows, like you see it, and then you're like, oh, I want to know what that means. So you look it up, and then you use that in your notes. So when you go back to the episode, watch it again, and you're like, oh, it's like a whole different thing. You're like, it's like instant satisfaction right mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like L- la is a pretty uh me- pretty like populated metropolis where there's a lot of japanese people somewhere the, i mean well it's a popular tourist destination for japanese people mm-hmm. so you can imagine that there's probably some sort of japanese community that exists mm-hmm. so if you have the time and oh well, I, I guess if you're in the la area if you have the time and patience to go through traffic uh, i'm sure you can uh, go to like a nearby Japanese meetup, mm-hmm. like Japanese language exchange meetup near you, mm-hmm. and just try it out. Mm-hmm. For me, there is one in uh, on Fridays, or there's actually one every day, like but it takes place like six in the morning or something like that. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Except for Fridays, which takes place at seven p.m. at like on Fifty Second Street on the east side. Mm-hmm. So if you're in the, if you're in like the city, like feel free to like, or if you're if you're in the New York New Jersey area, feel free to uh, reach out to me. Mm-hmm. I can't Sub- find right. my... Someone says sub variety programs like AK Bingo or Namos really help Namosu. at least to learn Japanese expressions as slang you may not learn from a book or course unless you live in Japan for a while. Uh, uh well, uh, th- well, thank you, thank you for coming, JS Spray One Two Three. Uh, I've I've never watched shows and never saw. I mean, that's that's really just the reality of being an idol fan. Again, because the amount of content that's being produced is just, it's like a fire hose of content. <laughs> it's it'd be literally impossible to subtitle everything, mm-hmm. except for, ec- with exception with except for like a select shows which again like AK Bingo or Nimbus. so I got really used to just I think mo- and most people are already doing this as well they got used to just watching it raw mm-hmm. maybe it's not everything gets out but it does help like learning slang since some dictionaries might not learn like no slang uh, true true uh-huh. but, but then eventually you get your knowledge so well that you could just look it up in Japanese and get an answer right that that and I don't know you could uh Either, either you kind of just like, if it doesn't make sense to you, like you just sort of, you just sort of gloss over it until, uh, you might come across it, and then like, until like until you come across it at some point. Mm. That's what I did, I, especially when it like goes to radio shows. Like I would just listen to that all the time, even though I didn't understand like anything. But I would just keep doing it anyway. Mm-mm. All right, Kenneth. Well, it's almost time for you to leave. Yeah, I, I don't want to keep you too yeah. long. So, yeah, yeah I got, you, I got, I got sixty out. seconds. So, <laughs> my shout out. I, I wanna. I don't know if you can put this in the description as well. Uh-huh. Actually, I'll, I'll put. I'll send it to you through Skype. Okay. So there's this guy. I think he's French, who wants to make this sort of uh, idol version of my idol or the my my anime list. Mm-hmm. If you're familiar with that, so uh, I don't use that, but. Uh, I kind of I know of its existence, and that's really uh, a that's a site that where you record uh, what which anime you've watched, mm-hmm. and then you can just sort of like talk about it within people who use that service. Mm-hmm. And what this guy wants to do is he wants to create a idol version of it, mm-hmm. and he's got this survey out. Uh, I don't know where the ch- my Skype chat is. Oh, here it is. So what he ha- has is this. I'm gonna send it to you through Twitter as well. So he has a survey on Twitter, which uh, I think I I always love people who want to uh, who take the initiative and want to create these sort of unique services, mm-hmm. which are related to idols as well. Mm-hmm. So if you could help him out 
and fill out his survey, which is uh, which is free. It's a Google Doc survey. Uh, I think uh, that'd be really cool, and think you'd be really appreciate as well mm-hmm. if you give him like feedback on his uh, his mock up so far for the mm-hmm. website. Yeah, I-, I was looking at the other day. It seemed pretty cool. Okay, so thanks again, Kenneth, for for coming and everything. Thank you for being part of the series. And yeah, for no, joining thank you. Yep. Along. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Josh. Uh, I'm going to close it really quickly. My again, my name is Kenneth Oi. Uh You can follow me at Twitter at at missingno15. Mm-hmm. You can also follow New School Kaidon for idol related news. We do, we do, uh, we review PVs that come out recently. The mm-hmm. PV hour, uh, PV Power Hour on Friday nights at ten. 9 p.m. <laughs> uh-huh. 9, p- 9 p.m. ET uh-huh. or Eastern Time. Mm-hmm. So I would appreciate if you can do either. Mm-hmm. I also uh, upload showroom showroom recordings whenever I can. So if, if you are addicted to showrooms like I am, then that would it'd be cool if you can just check it out. Mm-hmm. Or not cool. You can always just go to my on a just my personal channel. I upload it to my personal YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And that's it for me. But thank you guys for watching. This has been the Japanese learning live stream for idols. And again, thank you all for joining us for during the series. All right. Say, say goodbye, Kenneth. Toast. <laughs> all right. All right. Goodbye.